started. Okay, uh, so welcome to this hearing of the Local Historic District Commission. Our purpose, as you know, is to aid property owners in the town in preservation and protection of the distinctive characteristics and architecture of buildings and places significant to the history of the town. And we uh, today are hearing uh, the, about the withdrawal of an application. Uh, and uh, this hearing is open to the public and it's being recorded. Uh, Mr. Malloy will summarize the application. Uh, the applicant or his or her representative can speak, and then members of the commission can ask questions. Um, so uh, after additional comments, we will close the evidentiary phase and continue the hearing if necessary. And sure. Thanks. Yeah, it looks like the applicant is here. Uh, Karen, I um, request that you be promoted to panelists so you can present or discuss with the commission. Hi, Karen, it looks like you're unmuted. Can you hear yes. us? Great. Yes, I can hear you. Hi, everybody. Hello, welcome to Hi. the mission. Yes, uh, let me check, I, oh, let's see. If you can't, if it's hard for you to turn your camera on, you don't need to. Okay. Necessarily, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, I, I'm trying to turn on the camera, but I'm not sure I can do it on oh. Yes. So we have two members in attendance uh, in the audience. And so just, if, in case yeah. you don't know, this this hearing was continued from March 24th and it's for 71 and 77, 79 North Prospect Street to install a fence on the back of the property. Oh, and so that's yes, what, that's, I can turn yeah. it on. Great. Okay. So yes, I'm ready. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Would yes. you like to speak to uh, your motion? Yes. I'm, first, I want to apologize that I'm missing the the last meeting and uh, just to schedule a side visit. I'm sorry about that. I didn't get the email um, from some of my email issue. So, so first I want to apologize that. Yep, okay, mm -hmm. we can, um, yes, I'm ready, we can start. Uh, so um, uh, Nathaniel, um, should I can share my screen or you can share the photo I sent it to you? Yeah, I can I can share my screen if that's um you, you got my uh the, the pictures yeah. and documents I sent to you, right? Yep, yeah, yeah, they're all up there. Let me um mm -hmm. yeah, so I have to have all the documents open to share and they just have to open them up mm -hmm. again. And so I, I guess one question is are you still put proposing to keep the fence or are you at one point you looked like you were going to you had asked to withdraw the application yeah now i asked for a withdraw the application okay i can yeah. share this picture okay. for now yes uh can you um share it by the, the the number of the picture i i um oh, yeah. this is number seven yeah it's number seven from the number one one yeah, I wish I could just easily, um, they all open up in another, as each individual image. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you number? for your help. <laughs> sure, where is number one? What is number, oh, number one is the deed, right? Is the, um, or the plan. Yes, because we, we apply it and now uh, request to withdraw it. So of course, I, I want to um, let everyone know uh, what is the process and why we will happen like this. Mm -hmm. So yes, this is the first one is the, um, is the property line. Uh, we get it uh, from the closing. So based on this, the property line uh, show of our property and uh, also the estimate agreement, we got it. So when we, after the closing, when we uh, visit the property, I find out is uh, someone have the parking uh, in our property. 
So we go back to check the Eastman agreement. Uh, uh, can we see the picture number two? Yeah, um, um, let me just open it. Yes. So we go back to check the, this is the Eastman, uh, Eastman agreement we uh, received from the closing. So it's showing these uh, agreements, only four property on uh, no prospect can uh, have the right to share the driveway. Um, yeah. So based on this and uh, the, the property map about the, the boundary line, so we have a curious why have someone parking in our property and not the cars is not belong uh, with our tenants and the other properties in this agreement. So, and then we, and then we found out that the property, the little house is um, belong to the sewage property. So we try to connect a curb to discuss about that. Um, and then we met and I also, I show him these two uh, document in my hand. Um, and then he told me he do have the right to um, assess and uh, use the driveway and use our property to assess his, uh, the single house. Uh, Nathan, can we see the picture number three? But at that time he didn't, um, provide anything to us um, to prove uh, he have this right. So, and also at that moment, we don't have anything on our hand to prove he has that right. So yes, see you, I, I, I took uh, market number one and number two is the car parking um, when we visit our property. So we see that is not right because um, yes, and at that time, I, I'm not sure um, they have the right to assess their property from our side. So we think we should, um, based on that uh, understanding, we think we need to build a fence to um, protect our property, no matter for the privacy and the liability. So that's why I sent in the application, but up, but so far, I think I should get more information before I take the action. <laughs> okay. Um, so can we go to the picture number four, Nadia? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But uh, until, yes, it's, you see the line I am um, drawing here, the red line, I believe it, that is our property line. And then you can see um, there with the, this, the, parking mark over here. And we can go to the next picture, please. Number five, I believe. Yeah, let me just get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, see, you, this is the auto parking. Um, and uh, yes, that's kind of real. Yeah, and also the parking over there. We can, uh, we can go to the next picture, number six. Hmm. Let's open it up again. Mm -hmm. six. All right. Yes. So actually they have the, uh, sometimes we see the one car, but mostly they have the, they have the other car over there. So yeah, they have mm -hmm. like two car parking there. And also we can go to number seven. And the red line is our property line. And so you haven't resolved whether or not um... yeah. No, so far we, we, we have a result, but, but we are looking for the other way to resolve because, um, yeah, can we, oh, yes, that's it's pretty clear. 
Okay, yes, the red line is a property line. You can see the car is parking a property and also the, the other car will be parked sometimes on the left side is also the kind of in our property. So I, at the beginning, we don't think that's the right. Yeah, because you know, the cars are moving in and out, the liability. Um, so that's the reason we, at the beginning, we tried to build a fence and send in the application. So um, until end of March, and then we um, received uh, some documents from um, Shuwei's lawyer. Um, Nadia, can we show the document number eight and number nine? Yep. Yeah, here's number eight. Mm. Is that is that, is that yes. visible? Yeah. Yes, yes. So it's the deep they 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 find out and send it to us. The highlighted they have um, 12 feet the wide right of ways of the and the utility estimates in the eastern line of the land. So we can go to number nine. The last one, yes. Um, I think it's the pink. This part, yes, the pink one. Mm -hmm. So after we received this document from the survey end of March, we also learned about that with our lawyer, and then we figured out they do have the right to um, accept their property throughout this um, the twelve feet weight of share weight. Mm -hmm. But the lawyer also told us they don't have the right; they cannot parking here. They just can use this as an assess, but no parking, that's definitely. So when we, after we learn with our lawyer and clarify everything about this, uh, we respect the rights they have. So after that, we, we, we think we should withdraw the application for the fence build. But we, but the parking issue is not solved yet, even Yesterday, I have been in Amherst, the car is still parking there, but I, I think we can find the other way to talk with Shu Wei and the other way to, to solve this, the parking issue. But now we're talking about the fan build. So yes, we, we will request to um, uh, withdraw this uh, application. We are not planning to build the fan anymore. Did you want to say something? No, th no, I think that's good. Yeah, if you know, in the future, if anything is planned, you'd have to apply again to the commission, yes. possibly. Yeah, um, I understand. Yep. So that's the, the whole story from the beginning yep. to the end. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry about that confusion and appreciate for your work and your time. Yeah, thanks. I, I'll stop sharing. Yeah, I don't No, I don't have any questions. I think it, um, you know, if the commission has any, then we can, they can ask. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Karen, for uh, explaining the situation to us. Uh, it sounds like you're going to come to uh, just an agreement on your own, which sounds far preferable than trying to put up this fence. Um, so glad to hear that you are working with the current tenants and owners. Yes. Um, so uh, are there any comments from the commission uh, that anyone would like to make? Are there comments from uh, anyone else coming to the website? If there's, if anyone in the attendance wants to raise their hand to speak, you can now. There's, there's just two members. I don't see any hands being raised. All right, then um, can we have a motion to accept the withdrawal of this uh, request? Yeah, I sorry, the, mo the, the motion, could, the, the sorry. Withdrawal. The motion could also be to close the hearing and then also accept the withdrawal. So, oh, we have to begin by closing the hearing? You no, know, it's continued, right? So the motion could be both to close the hearing and accept withdrawal. Okay, um, a motion to close the hearing and accept the withdrawal. Greta, uh, do we have a second? A motion to close the hearing and accept the withdrawal. I second that. Okay, uh, and let's take a vote then. Um, Nicole? Yes. Karen? Karen? Steve? Yes. Greta? Yes. And I agree also. So I think we have agreement that we will accept the, your withdrawal and, you. uh, and close this part of the hearing. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank thanks you so much, Karen. Karen. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. So I think this then takes us to uh, the bigger question that's on our agenda, which is what's happening with uh, the plan to enlarge the district. 
uh, Steve. Yeah, well, a couple of things. Um, uh, oh, just to backtrack for one second, I did hear back from the Massachusetts Historical Commission about whether they have jurisdiction over parking lots in terms of 90. Can I mention that now? Or Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because, uh, Nate, I know that you'd asked Jennifer about this. It turns out that uh, we don't, but not because of the Massachusetts Historical Commission, but because we have an exemption in our LHD bylaws um, for anything uh, that's not above ground. Nate, was, was that something that was put into in terms of exemption? And was that boilerplate? That's uh, make... that's yeah, that's boilerplate. I mean, that's that's their template that they provide. And I'd have to look into it. I thought that was actually part of the statutory <laughs> language. No, no, she said it's done by town to town. She said that we have jurisdiction about anything that's above grade. Right. Um, but she said it's a town thing. So I'm wondering if it's a town thing. Uh, and it was inadvertent. If there's a way to, it wasn't deliberate. If there's a way to address it. So I just wanted to, I know that was an outstanding issue. So I just wanted to bring that up to you. I don't think it was inadvertent. I mean, typically, right, the local historic district wouldn't regulate things on ground plane because they're not, they're not visible. Um, I mean, I think, you know, I've said that we could, that the commission can regulate location of structures or other things. And if parking is, you know, prohibiting a better site design, then you can regulate parking in that instance, right? So, well, you know, if someone- suggested, Nate, could you ask town council because she said she said it is a town to town thing, and if it is a town to town thing, I'd like to know what other towns are doing, and if there's a way, at least with unless the other members of the council don't want to pursue it. But um, uh, Jen Dottery is her name. She succeeded Chris Skelly, and she seemed pretty firm um, that it's a town issue, not a state issue. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to report on that. Because you would ask Jennifer when you saw her to ask me. So I had to, you know, I, nobody works anymore. Uh, they don't, she doesn't come to the office anymore since COVID. So I had to, it took me three phone calls to get her, track her down. But uh, if you want to, you know, run that by town council, I mean, uh, be town council in terms of town attorneys, um, I'd like to know because if, if there's a way to not exempt it, I would like to pursue that. I don't know about the rest of the council, but, but um, I, I agree. <clears throat> she says it comes under the, it's not specifically in the language, it just comes under paving. And she also says driveway, and I don't think that driveway, <laughs> big parking lot is a driveway. But anyway, that, that's a separate issue. Now to return to um, the LHD, I have great happy news to report is that uh, uh, Elizabeth Sharp. Um, was pending town council approval, she will be joining our ranks, which is just great, great news. And she's I going think that to, is great news. Yeah, and she, you know, I've been in contact with her and she's going to do the um, significant section of our study report. We're in a very unique situation because all of our research, our study report can be put together in about two weeks because all the the form B's have been done and all the research has been done. But we have, as Nate will attest, we're going backwards because we're supposed to start with uh, outreach. And uh, the um, so we need to, Nate, if I, I'm going to like contact Kurt myself, I think, if that's OK with you and talk to him, uh, unless you want to be in on it. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, yeah, sorry. You know, Kurt was away in uh, early to mid-April. Yeah. And so he he said he's willing to meet, and it's just a matter of getting something scheduled. So I had um actually asked someone in the office to schedule a meeting with Steve, you, me, uh, Kurt, and then Rob Mora, and um so I, I can just follow up with that. So it, you should we should be okay. getting an email. Now, now is when is Bruce's term expire? June thirtieth. June thirtieth. Okay. Well, on that front, I met with Steve Schreiber after our oh, a couple of things, and I'm bouncing around. Um, during the uh, interview process, Paul Bachelman charged the committee with trying to do research for East Amherst, the old properties along the, the oldest commons in Amherst is actually on South End Street. 
you know, um, uh, and so he was like saying uh, that, that the town would like us to investigate creating an LHD around that commons in East Amherst. So I just wanted to report that to the committee as well. Um, anyway, I met with Steve Schreiber after we had our conversation to see if I could get um, him interested and UMass interested in coming up with incentives to bring to the um, pro the proper landowners in our new respective LHD. And he said he would take it under consideration. And I gave him the sketches that Pam Rooney did. In addition, he, I'm actually, you know, I'm afraid of this 98 Am, um, uh, Bering Street is going to come back. And we don't have an architect without Bruce. And we don't won't have the technical expertise to basically uh, deal with 98 um, during when it comes back to us. So I asked him if he could recommend any architects. And he recommended someone who said that she would like to apply, uh, who's an assistant um, professor of architecture at UMass. Her name is Carrie Klaus. Are, do, are any of you familiar with her? Mm -mm. No, OK. She, lived, she just moved on Cottage Street. She's actually found um, pretty interesting. You know that church on Pelham Road that's right before Shays Highway? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She turned that into a single family residence uh, herself. Her, and then I guess she wanted to move closer. She, she's now moved on Cottage Street. So, anyway, the short answer, the long answer to a short question is uh, our research is done. We have a new member of the committee who's going to help write the historical significance part of our. Um, of our effort. And what we're waiting for now is outreach, which looks like Nate's going to facilitate. And then we'll go from there. Thank you. That sounds really promising. And it's exciting that Elizabeth is going to be joining the committee. Uh, do we need to do anything to encourage this uh, architect to put her name in? I'm going to get back to Steve. I wanted to run it by you. Uh, I'm going to get back to Steve and. Uh, uh, he's gonna. She wants to meet with some of us. If anyone wants to meet with her besides me, I'm very open. I don't know how how many of us can meet with her ahead of time to let her to brief her because of open meeting. But uh, if anyone would like to be part of that meeting, uh, let me know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bruce. Yeah. I think typically the um, the bylaw calls for we have to notify the Western Mass chapter, like a regional chapter of the AIA, to find an architect. And doesn't mean we can't still talk to um, this mm. person, but we, you know, we would still see of if course. there's other other mm. architects that may be interested. Uh, she's in a unique position that, well, she might be practicing a little bit, but you know, oftentimes if you work in a firm in town or if you live in town and work in town, then there's a lot of conflict of interest. So what's happened in the past is practicing architects will not want to join because of potential conflicts. Um, sure. But, so I think that's great to have that, um, to see if, if she's interested. And so downtown, yeah, I mean, you know, interestingly enough, Kurt owns most most of what would be the expansion. And so, you know, he, he said he's willing, you know, I, I had a quick conversation on the phone with him um, the other week, and he said he'd be willing to have a conversation, but he didn't say either way if he'd support it or not. And so I think for the committee, it's commission. The question is, if he says he doesn't really want a local historic district over what essentially is all of his properties, Mass Historic asked for the study committee to, you know, reevaluate whether or not to move forward because, you know, um, it's something just to consider. So I think when we talk with Kurt, he may, he may, he may or may not, you know, offer that. Uh, he may be interested, he may not be, but I think we have to, I guess, first get there and see what we think if he says he's not interested. And if he's not, in, I mean, I've read in the handbook that there's single properties that have been turned into local historic districts despite the, you know, property owners' protests. But I'm unaware of like a number of properties um, in which the owner is against. It. You know anything? Else? I'm not. When we, um, you know, when we looked at one of the, I think maybe the first one, I had asked that question. Well, what happens if a majority of property owners object? Um, and they said, well, we we would, we would ask the town to reconsider or maybe reshape the district or something, right? Or maybe, or maybe delay the process and have more outreach until the owners can come to an agreement or something. And so they didn't really, they didn't have a strong answer. They just, you know, would recommend not moving forward or seeking some other, you know, 
maybe right prolonging the process or talking to the owners more. Um, and that came about, I think, with the first district because Amherst College owned a fair number of properties. And at one point, there was some discussion about having a larger district. And the question was, well, what if they say no to all of their properties? They they didn't. But it is interesting that you know, um, I didn't get a hard answer. You know, like a definitive answer from the state it was more about some, you know just some guidance. Yeah, this is about as small as we can make it. It's only ten properties. If we were to uh, make a another one, another district in the East Amherst, would that be a separate district or would? Oh, okay. So yeah, we would yeah. have to do a whole separate. Thing. Okay. Right. I mean, it's a whole. Which area that I'm talking about? Um, yeah, yeah. The common, the East Amherst common. Like that Boltwood Tavern that's now a lawyer's office. That's By Boltwood and Port River. Right. Yeah. yeah right uh, right and there's River, a yeah. the, the East Street School. Would that be included in that? No, I maybe. I love my bike. I'm sorry to interrupt. Me. Go yeah. Ahead. No. Yeah. No. I mean, I think some of it is there's a National Register district in that area. There's an the um, the towns applied to expand the National Register district, but then the question becomes, you know, like Steve, you're saying maybe rode your bike around, right? It's like, well, where the study committee for a local historic district in that area would have to then say, well, what is the boundaries? I mean, it doesn't have to be aligned with the National Register District. And so it becomes a pretty big project to determine really what is the boundary of this local historic district, you know, possible local historic district. Sorry, see, what were you going to say? No, no, I was looking around. I know there's that Boltwood Tavern, and then if you cross um, um, Main Street, there's a number of houses that look like they're from the 1700s. Uh, but besides that, I don't really see a lot. It looks like four or five properties, I think, is what I'm talking about. I, I think the building that the JCA is in is probably one that you would want to include yeah. in that. Um, and then I know there's a house further up uh, North uh, East Street that was the original post office. I don't know whether you would want to go as far as that, but um, that one also was a pretty important historic house. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think, so yeah, let me, let me, you know, it's on my list. Let me refocus and have Kurt come to a meeting and it okay. can just be with Steve. And then, I mean, I don't know if we would want to put East Amherst on a future agenda, if we want to put our efforts there um, too, as well, if that's something we want to have as a future agenda item to discuss more and we could, I could send some information out about it. Is that? So let me ask you this, Nate, would it be better to, if we're going to propose uh, expanding our district and also the other district, better to do them together or to do them as separate, completely separate projects? I think they'd be separate, but, you know, they could happen at the same time, the same depending time. on how much effort, you know, how much effort and work it is. Um, mm -hmm. okay. I mean, it sounds like the downtown one is, you know, there's been so much work already done on it that it, I don't want to say it's not going to be a lot of work. I mean, there's a process to follow, but it seems like a lot of it's been done. So it's not, you know. Not, well, it sounds like we may be hitting a brick wall. <laughs> well, yeah, it all depends, but uh, it seems like we could move forward expeditiously on that one. And then uh, are there, do you know if uh, Paul Bachman has some particular interest in that area, whether there are particular buildings that he wants to protect? I think what happened was the, um, a property owner uh, that owns one or two buildings down there, there's an older house right on the road. If you're heading out of town towards Pelham, it's a brick house. Mm -hmm. or it's next to the brick house it's a white house it's right right near the sidewalk it's it been boarded up for a bit um they requested to demolish it ah. and it is a really old structure and the commission found um you know allowed the demolition i mean the owner had tried to rehab it they gutted it uh we had, they had documentation they had estimates from timber framers and other things and it just you know it just didn't seem like it would work out but um i think you know it, it wasn't that is an older part of town and so, you know, Paul was just, when we were talking, I think during this meeting, you're saying, well, you know, there really isn't any protections there except for the demolition review. Uh, so, you know, and then the, the, the planning board mentioned it, they're updating the historic preservation plan for the town. And there's a lot of mention of East Amherst in terms of either redevelopment or it's an older center. How do you protect it and allow redevelopment? And so it's just, I think, I think just a combination of things of, you know, that's why he mentioned it. Okay. Um. Nate, before we meet, can you and I meet or at least talk about coming up with some sort of incentives that we could present perhaps to Kurt um, so he would be open to an LHD? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was after the last meeting, I did look to try to find like what are incentives. <laughs> it's 
there's not um it wouldn't be it would be it'd have to be almost like non-regulatory um you know outside the local historic district you know whether it's like tax breaks or right other things that wouldn't necessarily be part of a local historic district bylaw yeah no i understand that but that's that's part of my problem with town governance here is it's not done holistically everything is done kind of separately and it's not anyone's fault but what i'm wondering is if there's a way that at least theoretically even if it's under not under the provenance of the lhd we could come up with some incentives that we would like endorse and at least an, a, uh, approach other bodies in town governance, you know, so it, it would make be worth his while. And that's totally over my big paper. But that seems to be the way to work. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, or even we could have that discussion with him, like what, what, what would okay. he, you know, I think some would be what would he be interested in if, you know, um, and some of, you know, when we looked at the both districts, you know, Bill Gillen had said that, you know, it's a recipe. So if you really know what you can do, then it's actually helpful because uh, there's, you know, there's some guidelines. And so some of it might be, maybe we have to have some clearer, where the town's working on design guidelines, but you know, something, right, that can really help an, a property owner understand what the potential is, uh, what they can do. I'm not, you know, I think some of it would be brainstorming and then, you know, it may be that it's not, the role of this commission might be the planning board or town manager or council in terms of other incentives. Um, yeah, I feel like we might just, we could just yeah, have that conversation with him or we can meet separately, Steve. I'm, I'm in town hall every day. I know you are. I mean, would it would be helpful to me was, I mean, Karen, Karen and Bruce are on the planning board. Would they have any ideas about what might be, what the planning board might be able to do or offer? I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just yeah, yeah. Karen, do you have something you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, the planning board is discussing this as far as incentives. I think we keep talking about we've got to push the design standards. Once we have clear design standards, then these developers can uh, go ahead. This is kind of what you mentioned to Nate. <laughs> And so I don't know if that's a carrot to say that, you know, the historic commission um, is only in a way we're concerned about the outside structure, the, the aesthetic appeal of it, and um, that it would work, I don't know, to enhance uh, getting, helping in any way to get the design standards going so that they can finally know what they can build. That's only thing that I have to offer right now. Otherwise, I don't think we have, we're not at that point yet as a planning uh, committee. Well, you do like, I, like I said, I'm totally speaking ignorantly because I don't know, this is not what I do, but I mean, an overlay district, like for the, what they did for the garage, it's sort of like all the rules go out the window, right? And that isn't, I mean, what we have to do is they want to build, they're going to say, we want to do what an archipelago is doing across the street and knock down these old buildings, although there weren't old buildings on that side of the archipelago side, um, and build like big structures all the way up as big as we can. We're saying, no, you're going to have to keep these old buildings in front and build behind them. So the question is, what behind this development behind these old structures? What can we offer them the way of inducement? Uh, for the for the build outs, can they be bigger than than they would normally be? Could we waive parking? Could I mean I don't I don't even know. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, no, I, right. So I think those are possibilities, right? So if you really want to keep the front buildings, then is there a way to? Um, it could be through an overlay or other things to allow you know developments across property lines or do certain things to allow that to happen. And I think, you know, some of it is um, site specific. So, you know, is there enough area behind the buildings to do something like that? And what, what is it, what do they look like? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think when we meet with Kurt, we can kind of ask these questions and see what, how, how receptive he is to that. Um, and I think then, you know, if that's the case, then we could, we could um, come up with some ideas. You know, for instance, we looked at a 40 r overlay in downtown that didn't, it didn't, you know, didn't, 
get to a vote with council or anything, but it was, you know, it went through a planning phase where you could have increased density possibly, but you have to have affordable units and have design standards. And it didn't, you know, the, the idea is, you know, it's a state tool, but I think the idea is a really interesting one and it hasn't been re-examined yet, but I think, you know, something like that is an overlay that has, the incentive is there's density. Um, and then what's nice about it is that there's design standards and affordability baked into it. So if a developer chooses to use it, then they have to follow certain standards. Um, and so for instance, in this, in this, on these properties, there could be some type of overlay that, uh, you know, if he wants to redevelop, it could be a voluntary overlay. It could be, it could, doesn't have to be, but it could be voluntary. And here's the incentives that are go with it, right? If you choose to develop this way, here's, here's what we could, could be offered. Okay. That's, so that's, well, you have to come up with that because that's the only mm -hmm. I, I don't, I know it abstractly, but I don't know specifically. And anyone else who wants to come to the meeting who is in more command of the details than me, please come. Well, I think we're limited to two people. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, we don't, then I'm having to post it at a, as a meet, public meeting, which we could, I don't, I don't know if I'd have to, I didn't explain that, you know, Kurt thinks it's just a, say, a, like a private meeting, and you know that would could become discuss, be discussed publicly, but not that it would be a public meeting. Karen, did you say, have something to say? Um, I, I think uh, if you stress the fact that there could be density and parking, uh, those those onerous parking requirements that mean you have to asphalt so much of the property that that could be negotiated. I mean, I think Court is just interested in how can he make this thing profitable. And we're interested in how can we make it beautiful, keep the historic part, and have it be profit profitable because we want the tax revenue as well. So I think those are all things that people would go along with because, yeah, that, that's the road I would go. Okay. Okay. So I, I guess, uh, Nate, you're arranged for uh, Kurt, uh, you and me and Kurt to get together and and whoever wants or whoever else. But yeah, I mean, I still, Bruce, Bruce, I know has said he's still interested. I think it would be yeah. worthwhile to have Bruce. Yeah. I'd love to have Bruce there. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. When I, at the last email, he said he was still interested. And so I just haven't great. put it all together. Okay. Yeah. But the ball's in your court. I'm not going to. It is. Yeah. Okay. No, you can't. You can't actually. I need, I need that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, could, you want me to, you know, I'm good at bugging you. So <laughs> how often do I bug you? <laughs> Be like careful what you ask for an eight. I tell people, I tell people once a week. If you don't hear from me, okay. once right. a week is good. Okay, I'll give you a week from today. Yeah. All right. All right. Is there anything else that we should discuss today? I mean, I will say just quickly getting back to the parking lot issue, uh, Mass General Law seems to ex exclude things on grade, Steve. So it's not, it's not our um I'll, I'll ask the I can ask the attorney, but I'll ask um. Christine and Rob Mora to, you know, Christine Bressup to read this, but my read of it is that there's um, exclusions in mass general law. And one of them are, you know, one of them is terraces, walks, driveways, sidewalks, and similar structures, or any one or more of them provided that they're substantially at grade level. I'm sure you're right. I'm, and I'm, I'm just telling you what she told me. That's um, interesting. Yeah. Surprised. Yeah. I'll look into it. I mean, it's interesting that, yeah. um, you know, right, so the bylaw that we're guided by, you know, was provided by Mass Historic Commission. They have a, boil, a you know, a template. We made some tweaks to it, but really it's, you know, that was, you know, that's a pretty standard um, local historic district bylaw. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. I'll ask. It's, it's interesting. I mean, they write these things in here. There's eight exclusions and maybe we could have not taken them all. I mean, the way I'm reading it is that they're all exclusions and you can't say, well, number seven, we're not, we're gonna actually regulate it if the state says yeah. it's an exclusion, but maybe maybe we didn't read it. I have to read it again or, yeah. Okay. Important to understand before we expand to additional districts. Right. <laughs> right, because we could, we could, you know, we can, we only have one bylaw and then we have uh, in the bylaw, we have the districts are mentioned after. So the bylaw is the same for both districts. You could always have different conditions or bylaws or regulations for different districts. Uh, we haven't done that, but some communities do that. They have you know more specific bylaws for each district.
Okay, do we have anything else that anyone wishes to raise? Then do I have a motion to adjourn? Looks like there's a hand raise actually. Okay. Hilda, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, I just wanted to say that Louie was involved in the setting up of that East Amherst Historic District 50 years ago. And there are a lot of very important houses there. The Kellogg House, Nancy mentioned, was um, it's now painted gray colonial on Northeast Street. There's the brick house across the street from that. There's Amethyst Farm. I owned the Beehive, sold it last year at 797 Main Street. That was a very early apartment building of federal period 1790-ish, ish, which is full of the original woodwork on the inside, but it was connected with the uh, carriage factory that was over there that made the carriages for which president I've now forgotten, but he did use an Amherst carriage when in his inauguration parade. That's <laughs> 86 year old brain is lost it at the moment. I'll remember tomorrow. But, and then the other thing that I wanted to say about the east side of the common that I have to say, a member of my family owns all of the properties in between Kurt and Kurt's been on his case for several years to try to buy him out. And Joel just keeps restoring more buildings in that neighborhood there. And, and it's very wet. So there's not a lot that Kirk can do with a parcel he has just north of the old St. Bridget's Rectory. That's not, on, Hilda, you're talking about the west side of Kendrick Park. We're not dealing with that. I thought that's what we're talking about, the west side of Kendrick Park for the, the historic district. No, as I wrote you, what, we, what we're doing right now is 10 structures between Coles Lane and McClellan. Oh, south of, south of. Um, yeah, yeah, we're just doing the ones that are deep downtown. You know, because like the other, the other um, I believe talked to Kurt about that one. He's got to make enough money to make it worthwhile. It's not going to happen, I don't think. Yeah. No, but, but, oh, I thought you were talking about the parcel between Halleck to UMass, which is the bone of contention. No, we decided um, that downtown was more under uh, immediate threat and that we would do it in segments. Okay, because what had been talked about was the west side north of Halleck, trying to save that. Because I thought that was the part, part that you specifically left out of the local historic district because it was contentious. But yeah, if that's-, that's another story, I, I can, anyway, um, at one point, that was included under the North Prospect Lincoln Sunset, but we, we um, because the property owners, as a rule, were against it, as opposed to the rest of the LHD, we decided to uh, let it go. Yeah, okay. Well, okay. South Halleck isn't such a big deal. When we talked to him before, we told him we wanted to stay at a storefront. Anyway. Your wife, wife was in on that all the time. The cottage street people also yeah. talked to with him. But he wants to go like five, six stories high. And he's, you know, he's going to make his bag of money out of it. Yeah, no, no. It's going to happen because I don't, well, anyway, you'll talk to him and you'll find out. I thought you'd talk about the other parcel. Well, Susanna Fabing, what happened? was that the historical commission charged the LHD with the downtown, with these 10 properties downtown, Hilda. Okay. So I was the one that started this process. The, the, yeah, uh, the original commission. talking between calls and North, be past yes. that. Anyway, anyway, I'm confused. So we'll forget it. Thanks, Hilda. The um, before we adjourn, we could try to set another another meeting. Let's do that.
Nate, do you know of anything else that's coming before the commission other than uh, this plan to expand? Yeah, I was going to say that. No, it was you know it was, it was busy for a little bit, and we were getting you know potential um, applications or projects. But it's at, you know we had you know the hearing just at the end of last month where we reviewed a few projects. But no, I haven't. Um, just looking right now quickly through my um, files, I don't see any. I don't see anything. I mean, I do think you know 98 Fearing has asked to meet with staff. I think that they you know they might have something, but that could be a month from now. It could be two months or more. So I don't you know I, I mean it's, I'm assuming we'll get an an application, right? So are you trying to you know schedule something so that we could it could be both a hearing and, I mean we'd have you know. For instance, like if we're going to meet the week of May 15th to have a two week notice, that means something would have to come in in the next day or two. And so I feel like if we want to meet mid May, we can schedule a meeting. And if we end up needing a hearing for a project, then we, we could try to find a date. But otherwise, you know, you know, it's, there really isn't anything imminent as far as I know. Erin has her hand up. Yeah, Nancy. Yeah. So I I would uh, propose that since we have time and this meeting that you're going to have uh, Nate about with Court, that's that's one thing, and you can report back. And I wish you a lot of luck. It's really important. But maybe for the rest of us, we should go to uh, the east side and really uh, on our own try to come up with what we think would be the possible boundaries to work on that area, because it seems to also be worthwhile to pursue. So maybe that could be a task and we can good talk idea. about that. I think that's a good suggestion. Is that something you want to do as a group or just uh, people go individually? I think I think we have to go individually. Uh, I we can go as a group if we want to. Yeah, I'm I'm happy. It's always much more fun as a group and you learn <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to go or can I raise my hand? Maybe we should wait until our Elizabeth has joined the commission because she'll it sounds like she'll have things that she can tell idea. us. About. Good idea. Absolutely. So yeah, my understanding, sorry to interrupt quickly, is that they'll she'll be appointed tonight or it'll be confirmed tonight. And right. so then, okay. yeah. Rita, are you outside? I am. <laughs> I actually have another appointment. I'm going to keep this appointment going and drive to my next. And well, so I, I could put you on mute, but- Okay, um, can I just say two quick things? Um, but I'm still on. Okay. Nancy, is it okay for me to talk? Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, well, two things. I'm going to be gone the week of the 15th. So if we could do it the following week, or uh, I'd appreciate it so I could come. And secondly, I would like to uh, go as a group um, to East Amherst. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, is the, do you like to meet on Mondays, Nate? Is that your preference? I, th I think we you know it worked for some members for today and it sounded like it was, it was better for some members. So I don't necessarily have a preference, I think. Seems to be better for Nicole usually. So um, the tw maybe the twenty second is that possibility? Yeah, that no. works for me. <laughs> doesn't doesn't look like it works for Greta. So typically, a site visit is not a public meeting. We could post it as one and then have a walking <laughs> one, but typically, site visits are not public meetings. Really, it's just informational gathering. There's no decisions ma being made. So. You know, we could have a meeting where we discuss um, what we saw at the site visit, and I I'm, I will email you the National Register nominations and a few other other information about East Amherst, and so we could have a site visit and then the meeting afterward. And I think okay. that so I, don't, I mean, it could be like Wednesday, you know, it could be like the twenty fourth or twenty fifth. I mean, I'm not, you know, if we don't want to wait too long, I, I don't. Whatever I works. Could for Second in the morning, just not in the afternoon, just not at three.
I mean, does Tuesday or Monday morning or Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday afternoon work for, for members for meetings? Wednesday would, Wednesday's the 23rd? 24th. Uh, 24th. I could do the 24th, I could do the 22nd in the morning, but the mm -hmm. 23rd, I can't do it all. So, and any other time I can do. Oh. Can, can everybody else do the 22nd in the morning? Uh, do you have a time, 10 o'clock, uh, 11 o'clock? What, what is people's preference? Is this for the, not that it matters in my schedule, is this for the um, on-site appointment or is this for an online meeting? Uh, I think this was being proposed as a uh, site visit. Okay. Does that work? Yeah, we can do, yes, yeah, so on Monday, May 22nd at 10 a.m. for the site visit, we can park at the E Street School site Great. Monday at 10 a.m.? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then do you want to schedule a meeting to discuss it, a public meeting to discuss it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's up to the commission. I'm, I'm around. Okay. Uh, would it make sense to do it later that day, uh, three o'clock on that Monday? I think Greta said she can. Greta couldn't do Monday afternoon. Greta, you can't do Monday afternoon, and you, but you could do Tuesday morning? She I couldn't was, do Tuesday at all. I think it was Wednesday. Oh, Tuesday, the Tuesday you couldn't do. Uh, and Wednesday morning, I have a meeting at 11, but. Um, could we do like Wednesday the 24th at 3 p.m.? Uh, I think Greta had said Wednesday morning. Can you do Wednesday afternoon, Greta? 3 p.m.? Good. Let's do that. Okay. All right. And then before then, I'll have a scheduled meeting with Kurt and others, Steve. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Nate. And I'll bug you in a week if you have them. Hey, what's your schedule like this Friday, actually? What's that? What's your schedule like this Friday? Friday's good. All right, yeah, I'll send an email and see if we can get, get together. Okay. Okay, so just to confirm for Monday, um, the site visit, we're parking at the East Street School? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah, you can park on the street or just in the lot. There's a, a yeah. And then we'll meet. So we've got two things set up then on the 22nd at 10 for our site visit and on the 24th at three for a Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. Looks hey. like Hilda has her hand raised again. Uh, okay. Hilda? I wanted to ask quickly, would you rather I not publish about this meeting with Kurt? I shouldn't be asking you that, but would you rather it not be published? Oh, I mean, I think it's been mentioned a few times publicly. I think you could say that, you know, there's going to be a meeting with, with them. I don't know. With the abutters, okay. With the owner, okay. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd better ask whether you wanted that out there or not. We said it publicly, and it's this will be online, so I'm I'm okay with it. Okay. So the, if you have a lot of uh, historical information about the East Street Common and you want to share that with us in some written form. It's all just... buried in Shootsbury. Uh -huh. okay. I mean, he knew that my, my husband in his worst days of dementia could still tell you 200 years history on every house in Illinois. Wow. Unfortunately, my, my, that's not the kind of stuff a scientist remembers. Okay. But but I mean I do I do know a little bit because there was a huge exhibit that he put together with, with John Martin from the art department at the JCA when that historic district well we were buying the building and the historic district was being put in place all at the same time. So it was a big exhibit at the JCA 
of artifacts. So you might be able to find something about that, of what kinds of things they had there um, at the Jones Library. At the Jones, in the special collections? Yeah, see if they got it, you know, um, it was a town exhibit, so there may yeah, be something they should have it then. reports, things like that, of, of artifacts and information about the local, about that historic district, because it was the second one after Emily Dickinson. And that was the first common before it moved uptown. And the Mattoon House has always been very famous, but you wouldn't recognize the Mattoon House as a historic house. It's been changed so many times. That's the one directly in front of the Fort River School. Mm -hmm. Hilda, why don't you come to the meeting come um, Monday too? Well, what time? Well, well, send me an email and I'll see. I'll have to come with my walker and all that. Mm -hmm. Depends how much walking there is. Send me an email with the time and the date. Okay, I will. I'm trying to think if anybody's still alive who was on that. Everyone I'm thinking of is already. I don't remember if Ruth, Ruth um, Jones was on it or not, or whether she was after that. She's a good resource. Yeah, I'll print some maps. Like I said, I'll email the uh, commission information I can find uh, on East Amherst, and if if it's too much, if it's too too many files, maybe we'll just start. You know. A, something online where we can just see all the documents. Apparently, the JCA had a lot of archives, but they all went up in a fire when John Logan's house at the uh, presidential apartments burned, we lost all our archives. Mm -hmm. So I think that was after this exhibit. Mm -hmm. And that's too bad. If anybody can talk to John Martin, if he, I don't know where he is now. He sold his house in Cushman, but he, he was in on that. They wrote, that that same group wrote the Lost Dammers book. All right. Uh, do we have a motion? I think we've completed our work for today. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I motion to adjourn. A second. Uh, uh, have a vote, uh, Steve. Uh, yay. Yeah. Uh, Nicole? Yes. Karen? Yes. Uh, looks like Rita is gone. Uh, I agree. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Lynn Hilda, for your contributions today. And uh, we will meet again on the 22nd. But I mean, that's why I cover this meeting, because I know what's going on, you know? Yep. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. I'm going to end the webinar. All right. Thank thanks, you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye.